Deutschland nicht gelebt. Aber das, was heute vor uns steht, das ist und Well, we are about um, 300 kilometers northwest of Winnipeg in 1943, October 26 to be exact. 440 German prisoners of war were brought to the labor camp here and put to work uh, basically harvesting uh, fuel wood from the park. The first place they came to uh, in Canada was an internment camp where they were basically just um, waiting for the war to be over. So the government at the time thought, well, we've got all these able-bodied young men, why don't we put them to work? And so for those of them that wished to volunteer to do some outside uh, manual labor, uh, we had them volunteer and then we transferred them here from uh, camps in Alberta to uh, do some fuel wood cutting. Each man was responsible for about three quarters of a cord of wood a day. There was no fence around the camp, so the prisoners were um, loosely supervised. There were no guard towers either, so um, they were allowed to run in the camp, but then after the lights out call, um, some of them would apparently sneak out of the camp and head to some of the surrounding communities, such as Olha, Horrid, uh, Siege, and even uh, Crawford Park. And they would meet some of the locals, and they would maybe trade some goods that they'd taken from the camp. Um, if there was a dance going on, uh, they might take uh, their uniform, for example, and turn it inside out so that they weren't... Uh, that's the prisoner of war uniform, uh, of course. They would turn it inside out so it wasn't obvious that they were a prisoner of war, and they would go to dances in the local communities. Uh, they would meet some uh, people of Ukrainian descent who actually uh, apparently welcomed them uh, as the, the German army was actually involved in uh, liberating Ukraine during the Second World War. Liberating, well you sort of use that term uh, loosely. And then before the morning roll call, the prisoners would have to make it back into the camp. So here we've got some of the last remaining structures here of the old Whitewater uh, prisoner of war labor camp. Uh, we've got a little cleared area here with some packed gravel, some concrete pilings, and uh, you can see here these ones are really distinct uh, because this was the structure used to uh, support the uh, generator that they used at the camp. One prisoner, uh, Max Neugebauer is his name, or was his name, he passed away when he was uh, harvesting the fuel wood out of the park and a tree fell on him. So uh, he died. What was interesting about that is that he was allowed a full military funeral uh, in Dauphin, so the prisoners that attended the funeral were allowed to be there in full formal uh, military wear, and there were actually Nazi flags displayed uh, in the church uh, during the funeral. So it uh, might have raised uh, a little bit of eyebrows uh, in Dauphin at the time to see uh, the flag of uh, the enemy but this was the practice at the time to give a military funeral to um, a member of uh, the German army. The prisoners had to work six days a week and uh, they were only working eight hour days so they had some time off after that and they had a day off as well. Some of them did wood carving, some of them did uh, just some uh, drawing and art, they played music, they had a band. They had actually at one point found an orphan bear cub that was young enough that it wasn't going to cause them any problems. So they uh, turned it into a pet named uh, Moshi, I believe. And then a few of them got together and decided to carve out some canoes out of spruce logs, spruce being plentiful. And they would take the canoes out onto the creek here and out onto Whitewater Lake and just paddle around. So that was another degree of freedom that they were given. And we're going to go searching for some of the remnants of a few of those boats here in the bush and along the river. Hang on. Like, and it's not marked with any kind of a sign or anything. All these little uh, spruce bogs look uh, the same too, which is not what you want to hear your guide say. But um, 
it just makes it uh, difficult to find which one is the right spruce log that the canoe is lying in. Okay, I found it. You sort of have to use your imagination a bit, but it's got that canoe bow type of a, a shape. Um, the rest of it appears to be kind of covered in long grasses, but you can get an idea of the shape of it here if I just do some clearing. Still has that sort of nice graceful carved curve to it. A nice point there as well. A little boggy here and there. Um, <clears throat> little tricky walking here. Here's one here, you can kind of see the water level is quite low. In October of 1945, the camp was shut down and eventually decommissioned. Those uh, Germans that were here uh, as prisoners were then repatriated. But then a lot of them who um, enjoyed the area, uh, Manitoba or just in North America in general, actually came back and enjoyed uh, lives here. Well, I like the fact that the prisoners, whenever they got here, they appeared to enjoy uh, life uh, quite a bit, uh, just like I do. Like I like canoeing. They came here and to, to uh, participate in the Canadian experience. They carved canoes and they paddled around. Uh, I play music. They came here, they formed a band and played some uh, traditional music. And so, in a way, they were kind of like uh, just uh, regular everyday people who came to this place via a set of uh, very different circumstances, but they still got to appreciate the place for what it is. It's a beautiful natural place where you can take part in all that, uh, such as canoeing, hiking, um, playing music, and just uh, enjoying life in, uh, in beautiful surroundings.